Okay, folks, we're going to talk about the Maillard reaction, which, as far as I can tell, is the reaction that makes everything delicious. All living things need nutrients to survive, but humans have transformed this necessity into an art. In fact, many researchers argue that cooking is possibly what made us human in the first place, and drove our evolution down a very different path from our other primate cousins. We are the only species to cook our food, which not only makes our food delicious, but also makes it safer and energetically less costly to digest. Recent studies have shown that thermal processing of starches and proteins leads to a significant increase in energy absorption when compared to no processing or non-thermal processing. Because thermal processing allows for the chemical breakdown of macromolecules to begin before we consume our food, the culinary arts save our bodies precious time and energy when it comes to digestion. So how does that chemical breakdown happen? Well, it's pretty complicated, but in 1912, French chemist Louis Camille Maillard described one of the many chemical reactions that happens when we heat our food, and one that specifically makes it tasty, the interaction of amino acids and sugars. Although it wasn't until 1973 that American chemist John Hodge fully outlined the mechanism, we now understand that the Maillard reaction is responsible for delicious, toasty, nutty flavors in everything from caramelized onions to grilled steak to even coffee. The Maillard reaction begins with two reagents under heat, a sugar and an amino acid. In this mechanism, we're just going to use dextrose and a generic amino acid. The amino group of the amino acid forms an aminium ion after a 1-2 addition of the aldehyde on the dextrose molecule. The alpha carbon is then deprotonated to generate a double bond between carbon-1 and carbon-2. The lone pair of the alcohol on carbon-2 then pushes down to form a double bond, and the double bond between carbons-1 and 2 grabs a proton. The alcohol on carbon-6 then adds 1-2 to the carbon-2, cyclizing the molecule into an N-substituted glycosylamine. This glycosylamine is extremely unstable and can continue on to undergo any number of different rearrangements, yielding a wide variety of compounds that contribute to the flavor and appearance of our food. Furins lend a meaty, burnt, caramel-like taste, while furanones add the sweeter notes we associate with burnt foods. Oxazoles and pyrroles add a nutty sweetness, while we perceive theophenes as meaty and roasted. Pyrazines also contribute to the roasted, toasted goodness. Even that awesome golden brown color that we associate with freshly baked challah and cookies or a cold, refreshing beer is due to melanoidins, a pigment formed via the Maillard reaction in a non-enzymatic process. The Maillard reaction thus leads to hundreds of different products from the N-substituted glycosylamine, and not all of them are good. Levels of a possible human carcinogen, acrylamide, formed as a byproduct of the reaction between amino acids and sugars, rise as heating time increases. So if anyone's ever warned you about eating burnt foods, they might have been right. Either way, the Maillard reaction is just one of a whole host of chemical reactions which happen during cooking, which makes things taste awesome. It turns out that our digestive system may have evolved to a point where it actually depends on cooked foods. There are even those who believe that cooking is what helped our ancestor, Homo erectus, sustain the metabolically expensive enlarged brain that we humans still have today. So the next time you sit down to munch on some crispy fried chicken or some delicious carrot cake, raise a glass to the Maillard reaction. Bon appétit.